We are ready to begin. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gail Fatizi. I'm your HGAR 2020 president, and I'm here to introduce uh, the first session of this afternoon. I hope everyone is enjoying our first virtual members day. I know this morning sessions were great, so I'm excited for this afternoon. I'm gonna start with introducing our sponsors for this afternoon and give them each a minute just to introduce themselves and tell you who they are, what they do. Um, we're gonna start with Elisa Grayer of Elisa Grayer Interior Design. Good morning or good afternoon. Good morning. Okay, I'm starting my timer. <laughs> so my name's Elisa Grayer. Um, I have an interior design firm. Uh, it's based in Rye, New York. Um, I've been in business since 2001, started out in New York City, moved to Harrison with my family in 2005 and have been here ever since. Um, we do homes in Westchester County, Fairfield County, apartments in New York City, homes in the Hamptons. Um, I have a firm of six people. We have the capacity to manage very large projects, which we love, whole homes, new construction, renovation, um, and we also do small projects, single rooms for the right client. Um, most of our clients uh, recently have been young families moving out from New York City. I'm sure you guys all have a lot of those um, knocking on your doors right now. Um, and I also wanted to say I'm really happy to be part of this organization. I joined in February and unfortunately we had a little bit of a shutdown. So it's been, I haven't been able to participate, but I'm really excited to get to know um, as many of you as I can and see how we can all work together because I find brokers are my best source of referrals and I like to do anything I can to help out um, agents working. Um, we do free floor plans for um, people who need them. If a client can't quite seem to uh, visualize a room, we're happy to lay it out with furniture and talk about construction costs and we like to be as helpful as we can. So. Um, what else can I tell you? We've won a couple of awards along the way. Um, and um, we are, my goal for design for my clients is to give them something that is functional and long lasting and beautiful and makes them happy every time they walk in the door. Um, I don't come in with any set uh, suppositions about what the, the house should look like. I obviously, oops. That's my timer. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting thank me speak. You. And by the way, just one little thing. My name is actually spelled G-R-A-Y-E-R, -E not G-R-E-Y-E-R. -E so if you need to find me, just Google me and Rye and it'll come up. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We're glad to have you as a member, Lisa. Thank you. Um, our next sponsor is uh, Wheezy Malelli from Geico Local Westchester office. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Very nice to meet you. Thank you very much for having me. We're honored to sponsor this. Just introducing myself again, I'm Weezy Mullally. I'm the owner of the Geico local office in, on Central Park Avenue in uh, Yonkers. Uh, we've been here nine years. I've worked for Geico for 27 years. In 2018, we were Geico's agency of the year, the first time a woman uh, represented as a Geico agency owner. Um, so we offer great rates. Uh, many customers already know about our auto, but I just want everybody to know we have great um, home products that we write through the Geico insurance agency, which is multiple carriers. So um, we can place it with uh, high-end homes, low-end homes, condo co-op, uh, dwelling fire, anything in between. Lots of relationships with realtors, mortgage brokers. We're happy to be a part of the HCAR, happy to uh, be a member of many community events and giving back to our community. And we're thankful to be here today and looking forward to this. So thank you very much for having us. Great. Thank you, Weezy. Um, our next sponsor is Anthony Forte from Quintessential Mortgage Group. Hey, guys. Anthony Forte, Quintessential Mortgage Group. I love I love HCAR. I've been a, a member or attendee or a sponsor in some way for I think over 10 years now. Um, we're a mortgage broker. We're not a mortgage bank. We're in Westchester. I'd like to say that we're, we're in White Plains. Uh, I'd like to say that we're kind of a fresh look on, on originating mortgages. I've been originating mortgages for 18 years. And um, most of that time, majority of that time as a banker, uh, we opened up Quintessential Mortgage in May of 2013. And uh, the timing was right. And I think that a lot of my referral sources, uh, a lot of realtors that rely on us, attorneys, accountants, financial planners, 
would say that, you know, working, we work with over 30 different banks. So working with over 30 banks is a little more effective than working for just one. Um, so that's really our deal. We're, we're, set, we're located right here off exit four, off 287 in White Plains. If anyone needs us, you know where to find us. And i um, just happy to be a part of today. Great, thank you very much, Anthony. And then we have Lucy Edwards and George from BHT Studios. Hello, everybody. Um, we've been with uh, HGAR for at least 15 years. We were Zenberg, VZ, now it's VHT Studios. Uh, we are a marketing company and our goal in life is to make sure that every listing, every property has marketing strategy. So we offer professional photography, which is a base of any marketing, uh, floor plans, uh, video, 3D video, drone photography and video. So everything you can possibly imagine, that's, uh, that is something that we can always arrange for you. Uh, so I am director of client success at VHT Studios and George is our area manager. So George. Hi everyone, George Takani is here. You can call me George T for short. T and uh, I am your area manager for north of New York City and neighboring Connecticut. And we are in very difficult times. I think uh, the situation is getting better. So it's always good to have a positive outlook. And the most important aspect of our marketing for your listings is that we offer the property website and the virtual experience that is most important for agents these days in a situation where a potential buyer is not comfortable meeting in person. So please know that we do have those available tools for you and we're happy to help. Great, thank you both, appreciate it. And we thank all of our sponsors for supporting today's program. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the two presenters for our session on how to be your virtual best. Um, and I understand we also have two volunteers here for their virtual makeover, Cheryl Williams and Ishkoya, I think are our volunteers today. So I'll just give them a little uh, kudos for volunteering. Um, so let me just um, introduce uh, Stacy and um, and Dor. I'm going to read their bios for you quickly. So Stacy Cohn is an award-winning brand professional who earned her stripes on Madison Avenue at major TV networks and is now a sought after speaker and celebrated TED Talk presenter. She specializes in perfecting personal brands with her signature, signature approach, Life Brand. And then Dor Lada, our co-presenter is a former creative director of Bloomberg TV who helps clients worldwide project a compelling and authentic image on TV and in other live settings and teleconferences. And don't we all need that these days? Um, Dora attained international recognition as a master image consultant and has advised on the on-camera images of Michael Bloomberg, Warren Buffett, Linda Evans, and many other celebrities. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the floor over to Stacy and Dora. Thank you both very much. Thank you so much for having us. First of all, Gail, thank you for your warm welcome and introduction. And I also, we also love HJR and really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to present today. So today we bring you a perfect 10, how to present your, your virtual best self. And how we came up the, with the name is that we don't expect anybody attending this webinar to be a perfect 10. There's, there's no such thing, much more important to be authentic. But how Dora and I have split up this presentation is I have five tips and then Dora has five tips. And after um, Dora's five tips, we're going to uh, do a couple of, of Zoom makeovers, which is a lot of fun. And then we'll, we'll be happy to take some Q&A. So basically what we're doing today, it's really an inside out approach. So my focus is on personal branding, which is truly your best career marketing tool today. And then Dora is going to focus on looking your best for Zoom or on camera or you know, for presentation, sales, and everything in between. So let's get started. 
So first I wanna just share a little history about personal branding. Believe it or not, personal branding, the term is only about 20 years old. Tom Peters, a uh, management consultant in 1998, he wrote an article for Fast Company Magazine and he wrote, we are CEOs of our own companies. To be in business today, our most important job is to be head marketer for the brand called you. So what is his point? His point is that companies are not the only ones with brands. So I hope that you all leave this session and you know, with, with th this is actually a great visual, Me Inc. You all are in charge of your brand. You're your own brand manager. And, um, and, and again, nobody else can take uh, care of it like you can. So what is a personal brand? You know, and, and think about yourself. Do you have a personal brand? Well, hopefully you answered yes, because everybody has a personal brand and a personal brand is either negative, neutral, or a positive. And really what a personal brand is, it's it's really your passions, your experience, your achievements, your, your value. It's, you know, how do you, how do you stand out from the crowd? It's your value to others. It's, it's not about blending in. You can see this is a, a perfect picture. So it looks like these, these folks are on a job interview and, you know, where, where do your eyes go to first? You know, again, it's not about blending in, it's about standing out. So what is it that sets you apart from others with similar credentials? You know, you gotta be able to answer this question. Think about it, why should a seller choose you over the other top 10 performing agents in your market? And I also wanna ask you a question and hopefully the answer is yes, but if it's not, I want you to do this right after this presentation. Have you Googled yourself lately? So we all have, I don't know if you've heard the term digital footprint. So we all have a digital footprint. So it's basically, you know, crumbs that are online. They could be anything for pictures, social media, blogs, and they're <laughs> going to show up when someone Googles you. And so the important thing to know here is that you really have to develop a solid online presence. Your digital footprint, you have to make your own. You can't let Google shape your personal brand. And you know, as a matter of fact, the word digital footprint, if you think about it, is, is, is a little misleading because footprint, and I always think about footprints on a beach, footprints fade away, but digital footprints don't. They're discoverable they're permanent. So everything that is online stays online. And the other thing about personal branding, it is not a luxury. A lot of people, when they think of personal branding, they'll think about the Kardashians. It's everybody needs to do it. It's, it's a requirement. And it may seem that brands just happen, but they don't. So those that actively craft their brand and they deliver value come out ahead. And think about it, what we say, post and publish, this all adds up to a personal brand that carries tremendous weight. The other thing is, is you have to understand that personal brands are mobile. You take them wherever you go. And a perfect example is I had the opportunity, this is just before um, COVID pandemic hit. In February, I interviewed Ryan Sarhan for Inman, and I'm sure most of you have heard of him, the, million dollar listing and uh, he has books, he has webinars. And it's interesting, I asked, my last question to him was, was Ryan, what is like your most valuable tip to give to real estate agents? And he said very emphatically, you've got to build your own brand. Nobody cares what brokerage you're working out of. And so now we all see, and the news broke a couple of weeks ago that Brian um, left Nest Seekers and he launched his own business. And I can tell you that he will definitely be one to watch. The other thing that I want to share about personal branding, it's really for life. If any of you, I actually believe that it should start 
in high school. And I saw this with my, with my daughter. She was filling out her college applications. You've got to market yourself at a much younger age. You know, as a matter of fact, and, and this, is, this is a crazy statistic, but it's not only the test scores and the essays that count in college admission, 75% of admissions officers are looking at applicants' social media. So if you, if you have teens at home, college bound, you know, definitely tell them to put away their red solo cups and you know, understand that everything they do online is permanent. So let's just talk about the benefits of, of um, personal branding. It truly is today's currency. It builds credibility. It positions, it basically positions you as, as an expert or especially good if you have a niche. For example, if you're, if you're a staging expert. And, and again, personal branding, and you'll see the last row these are all the benefits anywhere from increased career opportunities, rewarding partnerships, and yes, selling more homes. And you might still be saying, you know what, I'm doing fine. And especially, you know, this market, yes, there's a lot of uncertainty, but it's, you know, there's also a lot of activity. So why do I need to do this, Stacey? Well, I wanna, I wanna convince you a little further. Let's talk about what happens in an internet minute. So in an internet minute, there's 4.1 million Google searches, 4.7 million videos viewed. And I don't know if anyone has heard this statistic, it's, it's pretty scary that the average American has an attention span of eight seconds. And what's even scarier that in the year 2000, it was, it was uh, 12 seconds, so that is a 33% decrease. So let me take it a step further. The average words per minute that we speak is about 140. And so if I'm doing the math correctly, it means that you have 20 words to get your point across. And again, the most important thing to, to take from this is that you've got to be a master of first impressions. Really, really important. So here are the five tips. Tip number one, start with a plan. This is critical. So you might say, well, how do you even, you know, create a personal brand? Every brand starts with a roadmap. You've got to build a foundation. So uh, way too many people will just jump into the tactics, meaning that they'll say, oh, let me, let me start, you know, a, a new Instagram or, you know, let me try, you know, I, I don't know again if, if, you know, any of you are using any of the new platforms like TikTok, but, you know, it's, it's fun to experiment. Here's the thing about marketing though, marketing is deliberate steps. And so is the marketing of you. Again, it's almost like the analogy of, throwing spaghetti on the wall. It just does not work. You, you, need, you need that plan. So again, the bottom line here is that, think about a business brand. So a personal brand isn't, isn't that dissimilar. With a business brand, you want, you want to, you can't allocate time and resources and money on an average product or service, it's gotta be great. And so that's, you know, my sharing with you is, you know, again, about the blending in, you can't blend in, you've, you've gotta find your it factor. So the first step is really to do a self audit. So think about it, what is, what is your superpower? You know, what is your strength? And then equally important, you've got to know your audience. You can't say, oh yeah, I, th I think I, I know who they are. Who are they? What's, what's their age? What's their geography? What's their profession? And then real important, especially now, is you've got to listen. What are their needs? Where are they spending time on, online? Because I can tell you, now that we're in a pandemic, 
and there's been all of these studies, there are a lot of shifts in, in consumer preferences. So you really need intelligence about what drives them and what is going to make them take action. And then of course, competitors. You know, you've got to understand, you know, within your respective market, the differences, the weaknesses, and how can you solve their needs better? So again, this is about in marketing, we call it the unique value proposition, but you're essentially finding your competitive advantage, your, your it factor, you know, what makes you stand out. In a couple of slides, we'll talk about how to amplify this once you figure it out. But again, planning is critical. The one thing that I want to leave you about planning, and, and again, it doesn't have to be a 20 page report, just even if it was like a one or two page document that you really sat down and, and did some soul searching. And it is, it's, it's, hard, it's hard work, but it will pay off in the end. And, and I want you to think about getting out of your comfort zone, because here's the thing, and it's my mantra these days, if you keep doing the same thing, you know how they say you're going to you're going to get the same result? No. You're not going to get the same result if you keep doing the same thing. You're going to be stuck in reverse. So you got to think differently. You got to think bigger. Okay, so here's another of of my mantras. These these four words and and if, you know, maybe you have some sticky notes right by you. Good thing to leave right by your your computer add value, not clutter. So again, the key takeaway from the last slide was personal branding differentiates you from the crowd. And then we also spoke about that you need to take into account the audience mindset. You know, the, you know, as a professional marketer, I know if I want a target audience if I want to activate a target audience, I have to get inside their mind and understand the what's in it for them. What is going to prompt them to action? So you really need to, you know, what I don't know if you've heard the term selling features versus benefits. We use that a lot with, with businesses. You want to focus on benefits. What is your value to others? I'm going to give you an example of, of yogurt first because I just had yogurt for lunch. And um, so if I'm trying to have you uh, buy a certain yogurt, I can come to you with the features and say, buy this yogurt. It's 20 grams of protein and 10 million grams of acidophilus. I don't even know if, if acidophilus comes in grams, but I think you get the point. But a much better way for me to approach it is say, buy this yogurt you're gonna sleep better, you're gonna have better energy, you are going to lose weight. Again, this is what we have to do with ourselves. So I'm um, always, um, you know, I, I go into individual brokerages. I went to a large one a couple of years ago and I said, I'm going to really spend time. There are about 400 um, brokers in this one agency in New York City. I'm gonna take my time and just look at who am I speaking with? And I want to look at their profiles. And I have to tell you, it's so important. You've got to make every single word count. So for example, a lot of the profiles were, um, they were really vanilla. There were typos, there, there weren't photos. Uh, there, there was just nothing that gave me the es essence of the, of the realtor. Now, on the other, and, and typically this would, this would be the, the verbiage. Hi, I'm Sally Jackson and I have been in real estate for 20 years and I have won uh, 15 awards and I am a top five performer in my market and I have, um, my lifetime achievement is 100 million in sales. You know, that is, think about it, that is selling that's selling on features. Nobody cares. People want to know what are you going to do for me? You know, so you've got to, you've got to turn it down, you know, you've got to turn it around and come back with a much more friendly voice and, and also you know, show your personality. Really, really important. I'm sorry. 
Um, the one thing that I also want to say is that you need to look at all of your communications and, and make sure you're adding value, not clutter. And so think about it before you send your next email or, or throw your, your Instagram photo up, pause for a second. I always say, put it through the who cares test. Is, is this going to be relevant and relatable to my target? Because I, you know, I have a strong background in, in media and news. I also do it another way. Looking at things from a news value of one to 10, does this have a news value of, of 10? And if it does it, I would either figure out how to reframe it or not send that particular item. So tip number three, you've all heard this thing, your network is your net worth. So as a professional marketer, the common question I'm always asked is, especially with a prospective client, you know, how do I get more clients? Or if it's a healthcare, how do I get more patients, nonprofit, how do I get more donors? I always put up the stop sign and say, before we discuss that, tell me about your existing client base because they are your pot of gold. Why is someone going to, to choose you? Why is someone going to buy from you? It's because they have engaged with you, they like you, and they trust you. 80% of purchase decisions are based on emotion and trust. So again, it's really important for you to invest in relationship building, curate your network, reinforce existing and past meaningful connections. You may want to form strategic partnerships, join boards, and take leadership uh, positions. You really want to get out there. And then one other thing, if you do have, and a lot of um, real estate brokerages now, of course, are working on a team, team approach. If you have a team or if you have employees, empower them, you know, because they are your brand ambassadors. So think about it. You have your network. They have their network. That's when one plus one is equal to three. Because when you put your networks together, you can ex exponentially increase your reach. Okay, so tip number four. Tip number four. This is really about like once you have, again, your unique um, value proposition, why you know why you why someone should hire you you can then develop a toolkit and your toolkit can include all of these or some of these things this is actually what i call like the packaging um part of the process but i can tell you and i'm going to repeat what i said in, in the planning slide average won't do it's got to be great so think about it what are you an expert in and then you've got to build from there. So it doesn't really matter if you develop articles, blog posts, or video, you've got to make sure that uh, the content is shareable, engaging, and actionable. You want to create like a, you know, even a wow headline, uh, especially with any email correspondence and um, and also show your personality. Like I said, there's a broker in the, um, in the Hamptons and she has, she's like known for her dog surfing. So it's, it's like, yes, she has other content on, you know, on her Facebook or Insta, but she also, you know, it's, it's like she sets herself apart and everybody always asks her, how, you know, how's your dog doing? The other important thing to remember, you want to diversify your content. I'm going to repeat that. You want to diversify your content. It's not just about new listings or closed listings or awards, recognition. Focus on value. You've got to educate the sellers and buyers. You've got to provide solutions. So don't just send out information on new listings. Think about how can you change it up. And the other thing is, is that Content is, is much more than words. Remember I said before, you've got to make every word count. It's true, but you also want to make use of visuals. I don't know if any of you have heard the statistic that one minute of video is equal to 1.8 million words. And the other thing, there's, there's a study, which is a little mind blowing that, so if you send information out, just copy, that three days later, there's 10% uh, 
the person that receives it is 10% likely to recall it. However, when you take that same information and you pair it with a visual, you're bringing that number up to 65% recall. So again, visuals are really important and we're all fatigued with too much content. Okay, so last but not least, you have, uh, you know, again, you in, in tip five, I shared with you, you know, some of the content you can develop. Now you want to make some noise. So think of yourself as, as a news channel. There's a lot of different um, ways to get out there, but you have to figure out what tools fit you, who you are, but also reach the audience. And also keep in mind that, that your audience may be shifting behaviors, but you're going to use all of these channels to amplify your brand. A couple of, of important things before I close up. The, um, you know, I talk about the drumbeat of, of communication. You can't just turn up the volume and then walk away. You need to bring your brand to life consistently. So you need what, what we call the top of mind awareness. So you wanna share testimonials, achievements, success stories, content, professional speaking, uh, media coverage. Some people will say, well, what's, you know, what's the appropriate frequency level? You know, there's no um, tried or true about it and, and it really uh, you know depends a lot on, on your, your marketplace. I would say you, you at least want a frequency of five times a week or you know one time a day. And remember, and I've said this before, you got to think about like every touch point, every single touch point, even your email signature, believe it or not, and no pun intended, but that's really valuable real estate. Like think about, you know, you can, you know, again, have a short little message or you can have your tagline or your picture in your email signature. So again, think about it. That's a great place to make yourself stand apart. And another important thing is that, you know, I know that a lot of you work for bigger brokerages and, um, and I also, by the way, which I didn't share with you, I, um, I held my real estate sales license. My, my mom was a real estate broker in New York City. My husband is a real estate attorney. So I can't get away from real estate. So I really do get your world, but you've got to make sure that you adhere to your, your brokerage's brand policy. You know, it's, it's like there, you're going to probably have to ask permission to do some of these things. And remember, you're an extension of, of their brand. So again, um, you know, just be respectful and, you know, and make sure that, that you, you, you know, that, that you are following the rules and, and policy. And again, even the delivery, this is not the final destination. This is a continuous loop. You've got to measure results and you need to assess what's moving the needle and then of course, refine strategy. And that's it for my presentation. Thank you. And I'm gonna turn it over to Dor. And um, I just have to share with you that Dor has, has helped me a lot. Dor, for some reason, the lighting in my office is a little bit off, but um, yeah, Dor was... had me get a loom cube and um, help me with with colors, as, as a matter of fact, we were on a pre-event call and I was wearing uh, black and it wasn't a V-neck. And I was almost happy Dora couldn't make that call because that was the first thing she told me when we were on our first Zoom call, that you have to wear colors that pop. So Absolutely. here you go, Dora. Uh, thank you, Stacy, for a lovely introduction, and it was fantastic to listen to all of your wonderful tips regarding the uh, personal branding, because this is um, what we do these days. Um, this is the new world. The world is changing around us, and we are quickly changing with this world. A few years ago, we only had a few of us doing Skype. It was pretty advanced. Now, look around and think, how many times a day do you do your Zoom? Um, meetings a few times a day. And what does it tell you? Um, well, what makes your presence basically? Did you ever think about what comes before you go on the other side on that camera when person on the other side of camera is watching you? 
it's think about this as if a Broadway show. When you go to see a Broadway show, whenever we'll have a chance to see it again, uh, think about the uh, actors performing, singing, dancing, but nobody thinks about the whole crew behind scene, backstage, who prop those beautiful performance to look uh, so beautiful, so vibrant, all makeup teams, hairstylists, wig um, stylists and designers, costume designers, choreographers, musicians. Think about yourself as if one woman, one man orchestra these days, because you are on stage in the front of, when you are in the front of your computer, your computer and your office, it's your new stage. So this is your stage, you are performing, you are your own anchor. Therefore, I would love to help you to give you a few tips how to prep yourself to become your very own anchor. So tip number one, obviously, you know, by Forbes.com, successful brand communication is 3% verbal and 90% nonverbal. Um, this is huge uh, percentage there. So think about how to make your professional per image on camera most presentable. Well, there are a few tips for ladies and for gentlemen. Ladies, create your own Cleopatra. And for gentlemen, create your own Julius Caesar. You know, think about signature looks. What is your signature look to stand out? Could be your shirt. Like mine, Stacy mentioned before, we have our signature colors. This is mine. I love coral because it goes very nicely with my skin tone. I have warm skin tone, more warm neutral. Always think about what colors go with your skin complexion and your skin, um, basically, um, because that determines what actually looks good on camera for you. So giving you those kind of tips, preparing yourself with five outfits, which would actually be your five best colors on camera would be the best way to do it and the best way to go. Just think about preparing your backstage before you go and you perform on your stage at home, your home stage, your home studio. Establish your morning routine. And I, I've seen people go, going crazy in the mornings and uh, hectic and on Zoom being, oh my God, I don't like what I'm wearing. I wish I could have thought about it. I wish I would have seen myself before. So practice, ladies and gentlemen, practice, you know, rehearse, put a few outfits and look at yourself in the mirror. Take a selfie. Selfies are the best. That's my tip number one. Take a selfie, look at yourself and judge or ask your husband or wife or your, or your kids, like, what do you think about this look? How do I look? How do I look today? Is it good? And this preparation gives you ahead of time and peace of mind so you don't stress out in the morning. Morning routine is a crucial thing. So prepare your actually just for success. This is my favorite topic because five outfits during the weekend are from Monday to Friday when you have your Zooms would be the best way to go. Don't repeat colors in the time. Colors, when you pick them, when the pop on camera, they make you happy too. I see Sherry is wearing beautiful purple. I love this color on her. You know, I see Stacy's wearing beautiful blue, navy bluish with the V-neck, awesome colors for their skin tone. So think about your skin tone and what goes well with your complexion. Um, wear colors to pop, number one. Choose appropriate cuts and accessories. Ladies and gentlemen, think about seasons. As we are sitting now, we approach, we are in fall. Pretty soon we're gonna be in winter. You're not gonna wear a t-shirt with like, you know, open sleeves dress because it's, it's not that season yet. Unless you live in California, I understand. <laughs> but on the other hand, think about season and colors. When we are in fall and winter, colors are deeper, more in the border, more in the beautiful foresty, turquoise, deep, deeper colors, deeper tones. Through the summer and spring, you can wear bright, nicer tones of colors which represent the season as well. And avoid busy patterns. What's very important, you see solid colors are the best to be on camera. The, if you wear something very busy, it actually distracts the audience, distract the person you are talking to because this person is gonna focus on your pattern instead of focusing on you. 
So for all of those beautiful and brilliant real estate agents I'm talking to today, think about this too, because you don't want to distract your audience and your client with your busy patterns. Wear something solid, nice color, color to pop that actually nobody's going to be distracted and doesn't create the fuss on screen because actually on high definition, everything is in high definition now. The cameras are super sensitive. So they pick that little blur that busy patterns can create. And talking about cut and accessories, I wanna go back to this part um, because sometimes, think about this, just the tip, the camera adds 10 pounds. So if you were very loosey clothing, it's gonna add to you. So wear nice fitted clothes, but not too tight. And also make sure that accessories you're wearing are not overpowering you. So big chunky jewelry, for instance, would reflect the light and actually make your audience to look actually at the jewelry instead of you and your performance. So we can move to the next one, tip number three. And very, very important topic these days. And I've seen uh, some of you having very nice backgrounds. And personally, I built my own. You can see mine. I spent some time because I wanted to be more like me. And um, I have enough room in my um, two bedroom apartment in the city that I could actually separate my studio and build my workspace. This is my studio. This is my office. This is where I do my Zooms. And people, what they can see in the background it's clean, <clears throat> clean look is my plant, my friendly plant I love very much. <laughs> it's my artwork on wall, but it's not too busy and doesn't create um, optical illusion that people are getting focused on what's behind me. I would like people to focus on me, therefore, because I am perform. I'm performing, not my background. So, um, you know, create and personalize your new work, um, your space, to show a bit of your personality, if you can. If you decide to uh, download new backgrounds from different platforms on, on internet, you can of course purchase it. Just make sure that you do it right. Specifically, um, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about this as a, if there's a jungle and you like the jungle, <laughs> you don't wanna look like you're jumping out of the jungle if you're talking to your client because that client is gonna focus on the jungle instead of you and what are you trying to convey. Uh, rather than that, just pick the solid kind of version of background or build your own. Remember about light, light is super important. I have actually two lights. I have the ring light, gigantic ring light, and I have the loom cube light, which I love. And it looks like this, Stacy actually has one also. This is the best light of all. Ring light is a little bit too bright sometimes. That's why I have to dim it and create only for the back of my office. Now the long cube goes on my face and lits up my face with the warm light. The light which is warm, it's the best light for you. Camera, um, in, even in the studio, when you go to any professional studio on TV, you see warm light always um, brighten up. Yeah, this is, this is the best option, so warm, a yellowish light is the best. And Loom Cube has this capacity, has beautiful gel over it. It's a trick photographers do use a lot and people who operate a lot of um, lightning system in a, on Broadway, for instance, they know that the gel which goes on camera softens the brightness of the light. So it doesn't create the hot spots on your face. If for instance, I'll, I'll show you something a very, if I create, if I say, you see those hot spots on my face? That's because the light is too bright. So you, you, you see the light I'm using and Stacy as well, Loom Cube has a capacity to be adjusted to the light next uh, in your room. And the best light obviously is natural light. If you can sit in the front of your uh, window, the window, the light, natural light would give you beautiful um, natural also look. Big no, no. And another tip is to sit where the window is behind you because this window uh, behind you creates the halo look and you're gonna start looking like a ghost. So never behind the window, I mean in the front of the, but window facing you, that's the best light. And uh, of course you see on the pictures, clean look, very nice um, office presentation. On the other hand, um, you have lady with a little bit messy background, bookshelf, 
nothing wrong with bookshelves, but please organize your bookshelves nicely so people can see you have awesome books, but they're organized too. <laughs> so let's move to tip number four. Very, very, very favorite topic of mine. Um, as a, a professionally trained singer also, I would love to share with you that your voice, your vocal strings are muscles. So what do you need to do before you start your speaking engagements or you being on camera or making presentations? You need to warm up your voice. And how do you warm up your voice? Well, you need to breathe properly. You need to know how to breathe and you need to actually breathing exercises are wonderful preparation to your vocal um, warm ups. And I have the awesome work up, um, warm up vocal um, exercise for you based on three exercises, humming, elevator slides and lip bubble. I can show you very quickly. And actually I recorded a short video. I posted it on YouTube. You can find it under door lata, vocal exercises and briefing exercises. But I'm gonna show you very quickly today. So humming, it's like normal humming. Mm -hmm. Always take a deep breath, relax your shoulders and hum with your lips closed. Second exercise would be a elevator slides. You take a deep breath, relax your shoulder and go with the voice from the low note to the high note and opposite. For instance, oh, 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 oh. you can do three times in a row and warm up your vocal this way. And then the third one, imagine little kid going like this. It's called lip bubble. So you're basically making the raspberry, you like blowing your raspberry kind of a fun, like kids do a lot. That's the best exercise to warm up these muscles around your lips. We have a lot of muscles here. So when we talk a lot, sometimes our lips getting like numb and kind of stiff. So warm up your muscles, go in the front of the mirror and go with those crazy movements of your lips, just like actors do and singers that would help you relax all of those muscles on your face. Breathing exercises. When you become stressed or anxious, your brain releases cortisone, which is the stress hormone. By taking deep breaths, your heart rate slows, more ox oxygen enters um, your bloodstream and ultimately communicates with your brain to relax. Deep breathing also absorbs endorphins, which are feel good chemical. And that actually explains why sometimes when you don't breathe, you're getting very anxious and stressed and relax, just breathe. I have a beautiful one minute exercise, breathing exercise for you, which is actually called the one minute breathe technique. Um, and this is based on inhaling, holding the breath and exhaling. Inhale on the count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it in the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And exhale in the count of five. <sighs> Repeat it a few times. And that would give you a nice pipe. This is our pipe. When you talk, you're using this pipe. This is your instrument, not only vocal cords, but actually this is the, like imagine guitar or cello. The big body, when the air goes, it's where the body is. This is your instrument right here. So relax it, make it work, breathe. Without breathing, there will be no voice. So we can actually talk about this forever, but I have one more tip for you. Tip number five, your body language and facial expressions. So a lot of people keep forgetting doing scratching, sitting, slouching, um, scratching the face. Well, if you could, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Position your body beautifully, just as if you think about opera singer. When they go on stage, they stand beautifully. They position their body, shoulders nicely, neck. When you position your body this way, automatically you're opening up this pipe, meaning your voice is gonna sound better. When you sit like this, 
first of all, your image is weird because your camera, you're not looking into camera. You're supposed to be looking into camera from your arm length. That's your distance. And you need to look with your eye level into the camera. Then you create the eye contact, which the same thing as we had one-on-one -on -one when you go to a meeting, when you look into someone's eyes, meaning you respect this person, you're focused, and you, you are present. So your presence is there as you connect with your eye contact. Don't look at yourself when you're on the screen because it looks like your eyes like are on the side and that means that you are not paying attention to someone that you are looking at. So focus your eyes, position your eyes on the camera level. So if you need to adjust the chair, play with it a little bit. When you need to adjust your laptop, adjust your laptop also. So let's say you don't look like this, or you don't, you don't look like this, but you are in the frame. This is your frame, this is my frame, I'm here. So you can focus on me, not on my background, not on my uh, something else, what is behind, but this is, this is the frame, this is the same thing. Um, so the biggest mistake is do not, Play with your hair, this sends a message of being bored. <laughs> so try not to play with your beard, with your hair. <laughs> so just focus, positioning, nice body. Body language is almost everything in this point because people do are being very sensitive and they pick up very quickly. And there are seven universal facial expressions um, as well. It's fear, happiness, anger, sadness, disgust, and content and surprise. So when you work with your eyebrows a lot, people think, oh my God, what did I say? She's like surprised or she doesn't like it or he doesn't, or are you, you making funny faces? People react to it very quickly. So think about your facial expressions as well and how can you practice those? It's easy. Go in the front of the mirror, as I mentioned to you, like actors and singers do. Look at yourself and practice your presentation or what do you wanna say to your client? Or record yourself, record yourself. We, we all have our cell phones, smartphones. Record yourself, play that video back and, and, and adjust to what needs to be done. You know your best, you know your best, how you can sound your best and sound and look, of course. And you can recognize those facial expressions. If you don't like something, practice more and change it because that's gonna help you with your performance, ultimately represent your brand and get more clients. So there you go. I think um, I can talk about this forever. <laughs> you can, um, so we, if we have, Stacey, what do you have questions and answers? Can we begin? Um, you know what, how about if we jump to maybe the, the Zoom makeovers first sure. and then we'll, we'll do the Q and A because I think there, it looks like there's only about like, like 12 minutes okay. left. So we'll do, we'll do quick Zooms and a couple of questions. Awesome. Always have a glass of water next to your computer. <laughs> the door, the, the other thing that I thought of is that you can actually jump on Zoom before a presentation to just see like, you know, where, you know, where you're framing and, and how you look. Yes, absolutely. You can, you can position yourself very nicely a few minutes before. And that's actually a very helpful tool. You can take selfie, but actually it's better to look at, you look at yourself first um, in a frame. This is your frame. So position your camera on your eye level, your chair. If your chair is too low, pick it up or sit on a few pillows or one pillow, whatever, to bring you a little bit higher and make sure you are on arm distance. This is, this is the, the distance supposed to be between your computer and your eyes. And, basically to make it nice and uh, frameable um, uh, look and image for you. Great, great tips. So I'm gonna stop the share and um, let's see, how about um, Cheryl? Cheryl, you're up. Huh? <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, how are you? Very well, how are you? I already- I'm good. Yeah. I did the little fidgeting around prior to getting on with my daughter trying to work it out. So I do understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, um, I love the color you're wearing. It's, it's beautiful fuchsia. It's so nice, um, looks gorgeous on you. Now, I one think. thing, do you remember what we were talking about signature look? You can pick right. actually lips color, which would okay. pop on camera and give you a beautiful kind of signature look also. Could be something like this fuchsia tone, 
um, deepened a little bit in matte so it's not too shiny and doesn't pop too much on, on camera. Now you see, when you look at me, Cheryl, um, look, you're looking into camera or you're looking into uh, on screen where I am. Where's your camera? There you go, there is your camera. So you see, now we have an eye contact. Before you were looking, you see, so when you look, exactly, when you look this way, you're looking at yourself or me on camera, but then now we have an eyes contact. So when you're talking to your client, it's really super awesome if you just look into camera and you have an eye contact with the client. That's perfect. Yeah. And okay. then, you know, I love your, um, I love your actually eyeglasses frame. It's, be, it's a great shape for your face, um, a shape. Um, looks very nice. Um, your hair is beautifully put in the back, very nice. I love the pair e earrings, very nicely. Um, I would give some more light. I, I love those, yes, very pretty. And I would seriously, like, I'm not sure what light you're using, but this is the natural light or you have, you have a ring light in there? I have a light to my right, which is the light in the living room, but I have the ring light, which to me was entirely too bright. Too bright, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I highly recommend that Loom Cube because the Loom Cube, you can um, pin to your screen and like, like this one, you, see, you can pin this part to your skin, uh, to your, uh, I'm sorry, to your um, screen, to your okay. computer. And therefore it's actually right in the front of you. So okay. that, this position would be the best position, I think. Um, and it would not um, overtake and create any kind of bright, hot spot on your face and has the okay. gel on the top. If you go actually to my website, you can see information about this um, on cameraimage.com. And there is actually about light, information about light. You can see it under COVID-19 um, services. So there's a lot of information I posted on because it, people, people need light and nobody teaches us how to use it. Unless you're a professional photographer or videographer other than that, you are on your own, one woman orchestra. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and your brows actually, if you can, you can actually draw your brows a little bit if you if you have an eyebrow pencil, just to create a beautiful frame above your frame of your glasses. That would be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And Dora, we're gonna move on to Ash, but just because I know that you shared this with with me to have flowers in the background. Yes. I think some flowers, just like, yeah, just right right in the back. Yeah. Like, yeah, just like a little pop. Exactly. Just give yourself a little bit of pop and some colors so it doesn't look like hospital kind of um, um, area, which is, you know, give some pop with the flower, with the artwork. Could be even um, something would you really like. Um, could be your diplomas, you know, hanging in the background. Um, but certainly, uh, yeah, I have two pillows which have a nice orange color and give some pop to, to it so it doesn't look too dark. Um, so think about this, arrange it, take a picture of it, and then take a look and say, do I like this way or do I like that way? Um, super important to create this because they would give you an option. But flowers are easy fix and actually I recommend and actually Cheryl if you can put the flower in there somewhere behind you that would be awesome too yeah on the other side where your frame is on the other side yeah right there somewhere yep okay. on, on the other side yep okay perfect thank you You're so welcome now we were moving to am I saying it correctly ish your realtor oh hi hi hello hi. Very nice to meet you, Ish. Nice so to meet you. Have your, you have your signature look. You have nice beard. You know, that's your signature look. Yeah. <laughs> if you want, you can trim it a little bit to shape it. I know we all kind of, we have hard time going to barbers, to hairdressers, because we are in this global pandemic. But if you trim it a little bit, it's actually going to show more of your face, but not overpower your face. So I would trim it a little bit. I like the shirt you're wearing. Don't be scared of wearing blue. Blues are awesome colors for men on camera. I mean, this is no doubt any shade of blue, baby blue, blue, turquoise blue. And under the jacket you are wearing, this is charcoal or black jacket. It's actually navy blue. Navy blue, it reads yeah. us on my end, reads kind of 
So it's also navy blue goes with anything. So mm -hmm. every color of it. So with your skin color, you can actually, and complexion, you can wear beautiful lavender also, blues, um, nice pink shades too, wouldn't take away from you. And underneath the jacket would, would work beautifully because camera loves those colors. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then you have in the background, you have your diplomas, you have awards. I would just give, you know, if you position, I would put maybe a book or two books underneath your computer to lift this a little bit, because it looks a little, yep, a little bit more. If you go a little bit, yep. And then, and then probably the chair needs to, because it takes away, it takes away from you, like down here. So you can see that there would be your frame a little bit lower, a little bit lower, and you can maybe, yeah, hold on. And gotcha. then, how far away are you from the computer? Are you from your like arm length or? Uh, one and a half foot, yeah, arm length. Our arm length. So mm -hmm. actually now we just, it's a little bit maybe high. And then you have a light, overhead light, right? Mm -hmm. That overhead light creates the hot spot on your, on your forehead. Mm -hmm. So if you can actually, exactly, because overhead lights are brutal. You know, in the in a, uh, TV world, we call them they create sagging faces uh, and then under, yeah, I know all of the terms we have, but you know, <laughs> if you could actually position the long cube on Zoom in the front of you, like on your face and maybe cover a little bit of this uh, hot spot, um, the overhead light, they would work very nicely because they would reduce that shiny spot on your forehead. Yeah. And then- And, and um, door, I just, and, I want to- I want to be respectful of, of everybody's time. I see there's, uh, and, and uh, this goes to you, Gary, I see there's some uh, Q, uh, questions in the Q&A. Uh, Dora and I are happy to stay on to answer them. Or, I, you know, again, I don't know what your time restrictions are, but we're happy to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to let Jana go ahead and uh, ask those questions and then we'll, uh, oh, great. we'll close this out. Okay, fantastic. Hey, Jana. Well, hello there. Hello there. And thank you both. That was really awesome. Uh, for sake of time, uh, there are two that are, are fairly general questions. One question would be, so many people use virtual backgrounds that get distorted around the person's head. Yes. Any yes. tips, to, any tips for that? Of course. I'll be delighted to talk about this because you know sometimes all of those um, um, exactly sometimes people starting looking like a cartoon characters because the, the the face is distorted. You know the best way to think about it. We lost her. Storm. That's so strange. Did we lose her? I think so. I think we did. Well, Apparently we did, but I think she'll be back. Um, I think she'll be back. Do you wanna to jump to the next question? I don't know if, if I can yes. really answer. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna to try to focus on, I'll give one to Stacy. I'm transitioning from another career that's still somewhat active, but slowing down. As I ramp up the real estate, any tips about how to transition, going cold turkey, embracing my past, what do you suggest? So I saw this question and, and formerly, uh, formerly the past was in the shoe sales business, I believe. Yes, yes that's correct. correct. So I say embrace it. Oh, totally embrace it. First of all, it's telling me that you're creative, that, um, you know, and, and you could be creative in, in the, in the sale and purchase of, of the home. And, um, and the other thing is I would make it, why not even make it your signature? Like I would be, you know, the realtor with the coolest boots, like the cool shoes. I know someone in, in the city that, that was a uh, former chef with Douglas Elliman and, and he's still all about the cooking. I would embrace it and everybody's always, you know, you can always share like, you know, just your, your coolest shoe fashions of, of the day. Love it, love it. Absolutely. Great. Free. Yeah. Dor, we're gonna go back to you with that question regarding the tips on the distorted heads. 
Well, I'm sorry, I was talking and I lost you for a second. So distorted heads, that green background that you um, people recommend, professionals recommend to purchase is the best way to go. And that it's gonna avoid the distorted or half of the face and kind of cartoonish looking like um, characters um, background. I highly recommend, I, I know, you know, another option to do is to buy this, you know, foldable uh, wall. You can build that foldable ball and put it right behind you and you're creating your own booth. If you don't wanna, you can try to use some others, but two things, you can invest in the portable booth and wall, or you can invest and buy that green screen behind you, and then you can download any screen you want. And it's not gonna make you look distorted or um, missing hair or missing, you know, half of the face. I've seen those actually quite a bit, so. Okay, great. Thank you, Dor. Uh, what, what about light that reflects on glasses? What do you do? I can see a couple of us are, well, several yes. of us, all of us are wearing glasses. <laughs> yes, including me. <laughs> so um, the best way is probably when you have your glasses made next time, make the screen protection, um, light protection glasses, which your, um, you know, person, then you go to, um, can make those glasses for you. And second one um, is to lower the volume actually on the on camera, but then I mean on the light, and but then the light actually would fade away. So I recommend, I recommend to next time when you make your glasses, make the filter. There's a specific filter which goes and actually does not reflect the, the glasses. Or if you prefer wearing contact lenses, contact lenses is another solution too, which I'm actually going to be doing soon. <laughs> Okay, uh, we, we, go ahead, Stacey. I just wanted, because I saw there was uh, another comment in uh, the Q&A from our, our, um, our shoe designer, and I just want to clarify that I know um, he mentioned he's, he's a designer and not in sales, but I, what I was trying to equate is that your creativity will help sales. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Great, great. And let's see, what diffuser, diffusers do you recommend for the Loom Cube? Diffusers, okay. The Loom Cube comes with the package. It's called, um, it's called broad, uh, Broadcast Lightning Kit. And it comes with diffuser actually already. So we don't need to port, purchase additional one. It comes together. The Broadcast uh, Lightning Kit has it all. So you don't need to, um, it, has the, it has the cable which connects. It's very simple to use. You put it behind your screen and you connect this to your computer. Super easy to, to use. The small right. loom cube, by the way, it comes with two diffusers. One is white and one is like a champagne color. So you just have to play around with it. Yeah. And it just like attaches very easily. So right here, when you look at this, you have a button level where you can control those diffusers by yourself. But, but be uh, prepared also uh, that sometimes the natural light it's hitting on, let's say in your windows, uh, changes the light quite, uh, you know, in a big way that you need to adjust it basically every day as you are doing your zooms, depending on the natural light you have, if you have natural light in your room. If you don't, then you can just play with those. And yet again, just look at yourself a few minutes before the Zoom meeting so you can see how you like that picture. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm actually gonna to toss it to Gail to say, just wrap this up and uh, we have another session to go. Okay, yeah, I think we could have gone on for quite some time. Thank you guys, we're both great. I should have done this before being on camera for this session, obviously, because I have my print and no colors that pop, but I've learned a lot. So thank you both. Um, and thank you to our sponsors. We're very grateful to them. I do want to just mention to everybody that's on this session um, that I hope that you have purchased a raffle ticket uh, tomorrow uh, during our um, annual meeting. We will be raffling off a membership to HGAR. 
Uh, the raffle tickets are $20 and they are, the proceeds go to the Hudson Gateway Realtor Foundation, which is a great cause supporting a lot of our area nonprofits. So I would encourage everybody who would like to win a free membership for next year um, to purchase a raffle ticket before noon tomorrow. So um, I think um, I, maybe it's in the Q&A, the link, but certainly you can go to HGAR and get your raffle ticket. So again, thank you to our presenters. Thank you to our sponsors. I hope everybody will stay tuned for the uh, last session of the day coming up. Thank and you, everyone. Also, our great volunteers. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Here. Thank you for the amazing tips. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. We can hear you. Um, can I, I'm just gonna take back over the screen for a moment. Sure.
There we go. Now I can see you. Hi. I have to unmute myself. Hi. <laughs> okay. I can hear you and see you now. Great. Good. And I know, uh, so my slides are, oh, they were up and, I, and Rich, Rich took them off. Should I put them back up? Or I, I, just wait what, one moment before we put okay. those back up so we can okay. go through our introductions and then we'll sure. go ahead and uh, have you share the screen again. So I have to share it again. Okay. No, but just not yet. Right, right. Uh, Crystal? Yep, I'm here, but my video says I can't turn it on unless you let me. <laughs> there. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> 